Hey everyone, let's talk about what type of internet speed is the best out of Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile for their 5G home internet plans. These are plans designed to be stationary at a single location, but they use the cellular networks of these uh, different ISPs to actually provide home internet. Now what's cool about them is that they all provide unlimited data, at least on most of their plans, but their speeds vary, and I want to bring it up because you know most internet out there if you're doing cable or fiber, um, you know, or even DSL, that kind of stuff, is typically sold by the speed. And that's kind of the opposite with the cellular ones where they're all kind of touted as, um, you know, fast. And most of them, like I said, have unlimited data. But then they're very ambiguous and it's kind of hard to find out exactly what type of speeds you can expect. Now I'll get into why that is. But um, here we have a T-Mobile home internet gateway this is only one of uh, four of them that they, they do have out there uh, here's a new AT&T internet air gateway that they have I'm gonna call it the uh, the egg some people have called it the blimp um, but uh, over here on the the far side is the Verizon one so Verizon has a couple other gateway options as well out there but this is one of their popular ones is the cube here so I have all these services it's a um, service that I pay for myself, not sponsored by any means. And I've been testing them for years at my house here. So I have lots of experience with how they perform over time. And the biggest thing to know with cellular is that the speeds vary a lot, not only for uh, an individual, but you know where you're located as far as it could be the neighbor's house, could be another part of the country. And the speeds for each carrier is going to be based off of the actual you know signal you get for each of those carriers and the towers or the infrastructure around you so that's probably one of the reasons they have a hard time really telling you outright what type of speed you can get they certainly cannot guarantee a set speed like a lot of the other hardline ISPs do but let's go into their websites and show you exactly what they claim they get and then I'll also tell you what I get personally with these devices all right, first we'll talk about the Verizon 5G home internet. Now I technically have Verizon 5G home plus plan, which is their higher end plan. And I got this, um, I first got it a couple years ago. This latest one I probably got about a year ago, I think, but they have changed it. And this is the other thing that you have to watch out for is they changed plans. And I must say, in my opinion, Verizon was the sneakiest here with what they have done. So. If we look at their current offerings, if you were to sign up today in September of 2023, they still have two plans, but they did a couple things. One is they changed the prices. They went up $10 a month so that the 5G home uh, standard plan is $60 a month without the discount or $35 if you have a qualifying unlimited phone plan. And then their 5G home plus gives you um, $45 a month with the discount or $80 without the discount. Or, you know, one gets high speed download for the 5G home, the other one gets um, higher speed downloads. But they don't define it right here um, in the open, but I'll show you where they do define it. The key thing here that they've done though that changed it, which I was really surprised about to be honest with you, is the 5G home plan now throttle your video stream into 1080p which to me is a huge disappointment because honestly that's one of the more common things that we do especially with a family with kids we do a lot of streaming I have 4k TVs why would I want to throttle it down to 1080p so that's something they do now there are kind of workarounds you can get uh, through that because they're looking at really where the that they've identified the servers at like Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu and all these YouTube um, come from and those that's how they are able to throttle it but if you use a VPN or something you can kind of get around that but still uh, note that they are doing some limitations there on the home plan and that they're not doing on the home plus plan so if we go into more of the details if you want to get to it yourself um, down here below that there's a couple links for important plan information I already pulled up the important broadband information then I scrolled down here and we can look at the actual speeds and this is where I'm saying they've been tricky with it and it's because if you read here what they have they tell you that you know if you kind of read through the um, you know between the lines here they're basically telling you that a 4G LTE backup if the 5G isn't working you're gonna get download speeds of 70 megabits per second and here they do say up to 70 megabits per second and that means that they do throttle it at 70 megabits per second on a 4G plan 
Um, but now, if you get uh, the LTE home internet plan, they might actually throttle you at 50 megabits per second for down and about 5 for up. And then you can see the first bullet here, they have a home plan with up to 100 megabits per second. So this means they actually throttle now at 100 megabits per second for the 5G home base plan. Before that used to be 300. And they say your typical speeds are actually, you know, below that. And then your upload speeds are up to um, 10 megabits per second. And they tell you the throttling there. Uh, but then right below it, it's the exact same thing, 5G home plan, but it has up to 300 megabits per second. And that's basically um, what I have or older legacy people have that signed up in the past. They're still grandfathered into that speed. So you don't want to cancel if you are planning to sign back up in the future because you're going to lose that grandfathered in upper speed but here it actually tells you that your still video streaming is throttled at the 1080p so they might have put that on people and not grandfather them in um, i'm not positive there um, I, I misspoke just a second ago i have the 5g home plus plan but so the next one here you can see the 5g home plus plan and now these two are a little bit different because the plans with up to 300 megabits per second download speed those ones are tied to, and I'm actually glad that they clarified here, because it's 5G ultra wideband, so the UWB that they use for marketing terms, but then they clarify more here by saying midband, and that's their C-band network, N77 is the band name that they use, and for that one you are throttled at 300 megabits per second down and 20 up, and I've seen that over and over again in my testing. I can get burps um, right above it, and then it just tapers me down and, and holds me there. But they let you do 4K streaming there. And then if you get the 1 gig download speeds, that means you're on their their 5G ultra wide band high band, which is millimeter wave. And that's a whole different um, type of technology. They have that in like really densely populated areas. I know uh, for me up here in southeast Michigan, uh, Ann Arbor has it uh, around the U of M campus. Uh, they have it in like big uh, football stadiums and that kind of stuff. And if you are lucky enough to be one of those places, then you get uh, one gig download speeds. All right, so that is the Verizon story there. So that's something uh, to know. If we go over to the T-Mobile, and this is regardless of which gateway you have, uh, but you can see if you sign up, you have a couple different options depending on if you're bundling it with um, phone or other um, services there or if you're just getting it by itself. And they all have the same speeds, even though they have different prices for that. So it's just bundling. But I go in here and I clicked on uh, more details. I think frequently asked questions perhaps. And on here one of these questions is about speed. What kind of speeds can I um, expect out of it? All right, and then if you look in here and see they have two frequently asked questions for speeds. One of them is download speeds. And that's 72 to 245 is what they tell you is typical for download. With 25% of people getting below that and 25% of people getting above that. So that's your 50% median range there. And I would agree with that. Uh, and then a little bit down, it has a upload speed one. And that's saying that that's 15 to 31 megabits per second. So that is what uh, they say. Now there is a um, another link there that they tell you to go to this open internet page. So I go to that just to see what else does it say. Now this has information for more than just the... Um, the home internet so you have to go in here and scroll around and look at exactly what it is uh, here's the wireless internet part and they call out their business internet and their wireless home internet separately as far as I know they're actually treated the same on the network but um, they do have slightly different speeds here listed for the business versus the home but it pretty much uh, aligns with what we just read on the on the previous page unless you look at just the 4G LTE part if you see the 4G LTE part, you're looking at 30 to 110 for download and 6 to 23 for upload. But they do also give you some latency numbers here, which might be helpful as well. So the first thing I'll say about T-Mobile is they don't have a throttle, which is great. Uh, but it also means that you're going to see vastly different speeds at um, your house versus someone else's house or even based off time of day because they put the home internet uh, devices as the lowest priority on their network so that basically means you only get whatever bandwidth is left over after all the other users are using it for their cell phones or hotspots or whatever else uh, you get the leftovers so for a lot of folks like me most of the time I'm not affected by it 
but if it's a busy time of day or for whatever reason, uh, so, sometimes uh, people um, chalk it up to weather, meaning they think the rain or snow is is slowing down the network. What I've seen is that more people are just inside and actually using the internet on their mobile devices, and so that's causing a uh, slowdown. But T-Mobile does not throttle again, but they do deprioritize, so you might see your speeds slow down uh, based off of that. Now, if we go to AT&T, this Internet Air is a newer service that's rolled out. I got it because I qualified at my address. I did no tricks um, there to get it, but it is in select markets. It's rolling out more and more places every day or every week, uh, so be sure to check that out if that's something you're interested in and you have good AT&T coverage. All right, so in here on AT&T's website for their Internet Air service, it's $55 a month. Um, if you don't have their uh, a wireless plan that combines with it, or you can have a $35 a month if you have a bundled discount. If I go specifically to Internet Air in here, somewhere there are some questions I can go in and ask it about what type of speeds. If you look here in the fine print on some of these pages, you will see that they talk about temporarily slowing down your data speeds if the network is busy. So that's deprioritization like I was talking about with T-Mobile. And then obviously if you abuse it, um, they will close it out like always. But if we look here at the frequently asked questions, we can uh, expand some of their what um, should I expect for speeds. And here they tell you 40 to 140 megabits per second for download. Now I don't think it's called out right here, but I think it's 20 or 25 megabits per second for upload that they offer and I will tell you that that is what I've experienced with this as well that's about the max I've seen and I do see some range of, of speed with my AT&T probably more so than the other two so more so than the T-Mobile whereas my Verizon seems to be probably the most consistent for me and the thing with that is it's going that that can't um, necessarily apply or be a rule of thumb for you and everyone else out there it's going to vary based off your exact location and know that when we say location I'm not even talking about just where you're located um, in a state or in a city or down a road but even where the gateway is located in your house so uh, if you're on the basement level if you're on the ground level if you're second floor with the gateway or maybe you're in a five-story apartment building uh, being uh, higher up or in a different location left or right that actually makes a big difference with these services so overall right now actually the slowest one if you were to go to sign up for it is Verizon 5G home uh, where they limit you to 100 megabits per second for download and then next it's going to be this AT&T one which is uh, looks like it's capped at 140 best I can tell on their 5G uh, service and then T-Mobile, which is uncapped, but the speed you actually end up with at your house is actually going to be up to you to find out. I think all these offer a uh, free trial where you can get it. I think um, there are normally 14 days is how most of them are. If you're a current AT&T DSL customer, I think they only give you seven days actually to try this out to see if you like it and want to replace your DSL service with it. These other ones, I think you get um, 14 days or even 30 days to try it out. And none of them have contracts, so worst case, you end up paying for a month of their service, about 50 bucks, give or take, and then you return it and you move on. So that's the long story to what type of speeds you can expect. The reason it's long is, as you just saw, is because it is not clear cut. It does vary about a lot of things. But I have other videos out there that have lots of information about all of these uh, 5G cellular services and how they perform, ways to improve them, tips and tricks. Be sure to check it out and stay tuned for the next video.